Hi, everyone. Welcome to webinar 58. Here I'll be visiting some of our customers' websites and offering feedback and tips, as well as noting some strong features. There are a lot of ways to make a website, but I think there are very key aspects that you can leverage to improve your site and hopefully drive a sale. We'll cover a handful of websites and show you what can be improved and what is working for them now. I would also like to thank our customers for submitting their websites and allowing us to offer this feedback. Hopefully with these examples, you can see what makes a website great and how to make it even better. But before we go through it, I would like to make two quick announcements. The first one is that we now offer product preferences and that's now a feature on our website, which will allow you to pre-select options for each product type. For example, if you sell stretch canvas, you can now have it so each stretch canvas will have the same hanging hardware option, wrap option, and whether or not it will have a foam core underlayer. Just go to the store settings. There you can select store product preferences, select your product, and just be sure to press save after you made your selections. In addition to that, we also now offer direct integration with Squarespace. If you're using this platform, this is great news as integration can now be easier than ever. Just keep in mind that with the plan that you need to use, it has to be commerce advanced on Squarespace. Like other integration methods, simply click on the new store, click Squarespace and enter your Squarespace API key. To retrieve this API key, just go to Squarespace settings, developer tools, developer API keys and generate keys. Enter your name and be sure to enter the following permissions shown on the screenshot. Now with all of that out of the way, let's move on to the websites. I'd like to go over a few today, and if you like this video, let us know by giving a thumbs up on the video, and we'll see if we could do more of these type of videos where we look at the customer stores. All right, so we'll start with Jonathan's here, and his website is centered around photography. I would say that the way Jonathan went about his website is that he decided to go for more of a gallery feel. This way it emulates kind of what you see in a real world gallery where it's more image focused over commerce focused, which isn't a bad choice to make when it comes to your online website. I like that there's a sense of choice because as you can see here, when I select the product, I can go ahead and crop it to my needs. This allows me to edit as needed, and I like this op option. You don't see this often on online stores or in those big box stores as well. And it makes sense for things like photography and other images that could lend themselves to this. I think that's one of the stronger features that his store offers. Just keep in mind though, one of the things I could offer some improvements for is that while there is great presentation, I wish that buying images was a close, faster step-by-step -step process. As you can see, I need to click through a couple of things before I can go ahead and add it to my cart. If there is a faster way to do so, that'll make the customer buying experience all a little bit easier. Also, in addition to this, I would appreciate some bigger previews and maybe some mockups of the image within the frame before they actually go ahead and add it to the cart or quote unquote, create your frame. Overall though, great website, Jonathan, and I love to see what you've done and amazing photography as well. Next up, we have this website called Chatter box walls. Here you can see they have a lot of items here. However, the first and forefront item I see that catches my eye is the reviews. And so I would say that this website definitely centers around reviews and building trust with the customer or establishing it. Customers themselves love seeing what others have to say about websites and reviews are a big part of this. I think that with that being said, when I click on here, being able to see everyone's reviews in detail and seeing the things they offer, great option, great presentation in that regard. One thing, however, I would um, say is that the website can be a little bit busy and 
specifically, I would say if there's one place that I would recommend um, just streamlining a little bit is the personalized gifts and the gifts by age or generally the menu, as I see that there is a lot of categories. And I think you could streamline this too. For example, special occasions, birthdays for him, for her. Nonetheless, it is a big plus to have all these categories. It's just more so how you want to present it and streamline it. If you still want to have all of these categories available for people to select on, I definitely suggest that a, men a filtering option would be a, a big plus for this website and could help. Just note that all these phrases are really strong for SEO purposes, so I see the importance of them. However, for the customer's enjoyment of the website or their rather their experience and how to improve it, I would highly recommend just um, making it so that the menu is a bit more concise. That way they can click on it and from there, they can go ahead and filter in further using the filtering system. Next up, we have KPM Photo Art. And as you can see from here, we already have a little pop-up that says you can enjoy the first 10% off your order, your first order, um, which is a great way to start establishing like you're here to provide some savings for your customers. Um, I would consider this website very polished and refined. I think the store owner has a lot of wonderful and strong pieces for their art. And one of the things that I stood out to me as someone, not only as a customer, but also as a marketing person, um, is the curated collections. One of the things that I really thoroughly enjoyed was this section here, as it's a great way to cross sell your art when they are in a series of sorts, because while these are three different products that this person's offering, having it in one collection together gives people a vision of what they can do with all three of them together. So big props to them for creating this a great way to cross sell and something that I would highly suggest for others to implement. As for one of the things that I would say um, could be improved on is just um, for the mockups themselves, they can definitely have some more elements to them. And the reason why mockups are something we utilize in the first place is to give people a sense of the room with the art in conjunction with it. So even if it's just adding a few more elements like a vase or adding in um, more fabrics onto the table, a mirror on the side, it adds context to make people feel like these items belong in a home instead of a place that, you know, is sterile in a way. A, an alternative to this, though, is that if you are looking to have some mock-ups that you want to feel more contextualized, is that this person, for example, has a store themselves or a physical art studio. So taking photos of the images in the art studio is a great way to give them a semblance of real worldness. And not only does that do provide more context for the art, but also builds trust that these images belong in a time and place somewhere in the real world. And so while I do give them big props on everything from the menu to the cleanliness of the website, I think that the mockups could provide some of that warmth of what people are looking for when it comes to photography, especially. They're looking to see how this could be in their house. And a big part of that is just making sure that you give that mockup a sense of feeling like it is home, it is in a place, even if it's in a place of business, how that could look. And then lastly, we're going to look at Amanda's art um, website. And here, first and foremost, um, just looking at the first homepage, I think it's a really strong indicator just to have artists painting the image already from the get-go um, as the first introductory image. I would just suggest, in this case, um, have a more high-quality version of the um image itself. So this image, while really strong, I would love to see it not as pixelated. And, you know, one could, you know, have a conversation of what should be high quality image, what shouldn't be for the sake of people not taking your art. In this case, since the artist is kind of 
putting their arm on the art piece themselves, it's going to make it harder for people to take this art and, you know, use it and for their own purposes. So I would highly suggest in this case to have a more updated image that is a high, higher quality or higher resolution rather. Um, but other than that, um, great homepage. I appreciate the clean um, menu as well as the search option as well in case people already come knowing what they want to look for. And then shop by collection. Here are two menus and, you know, a wonderful little bio that's small and gets to the point. Here you can see they offer the reviews and first in the forefront. And, you know, great website. And again, people here are offering their 10% off. Great way to start incentivizing people to make the purchase, just like our previous website. And now we can go ahead and get into the website. I already went ahead and made a couple purchases myself since their collections seem to be very straightforward. Um, what I like about theirs is that they offer, you know, the filtering option. So what's in stock? What are the price points people are looking for? You can definitely add in more filters like colors, vibes, moods, if you have a larger selection. Here, this artist is a more um, selective selection. So I don't think that's necessary for them. Um, but as you see, I added a couple items already just to give you a review of their checkout. And here, I want to note that their checkout section is very great. And I like that here, um, I get a little review, more reviews, just so it can incentivize a person further that they are in safe hands when it comes to making a purchase on this website. Here it reviews everything, the size, the frame, the material. I appreciate that because I want to review my details before I go ahead and purchase. Um, and then here, I also appreciate that they offer four checkout options, but what matters is that it doesn't look too busy. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and check out conventionally with not using the other ones. And this, as you guys may, if you guys have some familiarity with Shopify, this is the standard Shopify checkout page. Um, but they're also offering additional pieces, uh, additional pay methods here as well. Um, for me personally, though, I do like this because it allows the customer to make the choice. There have been some websites that I have come across where the checkout page is a little bit busy. And the last thing you want is for a customer to have to second guess how to pay for something because there's just so many options or even not enough options. So great on them in that regard. But um, one of the things I will note that can be improved on is definitely readability of the font. So the font itself is beautiful, however, there is a certain legibility that we need to kind of make sure that we're um, instilling in our websites because while I can read it, I think those who have lower vision cannot read it as well or it may be a bit more strenuous for them. So I see that in the menu. I see that when I go into the drop down, this type of font is a little bit difficult to read. So I would say just by adjusting that little thing, it can make your website a lot more, one, accessible, and two, um, just help people have a more positive purchasing experience. And as you can see here, um, it's seen throughout the sizes and the rest of the website. So um, I know that this is a feature you can easily change on Shopify, so keep that in mind um, for when you're making your website. Font legibility is huge and is important. One of the things that I would like to kind of cover as well is that when you're doing these types of um, colors, white on white background with a dark font is usually the way to go. But if you're going to go with a dark background, make sure it's either white or really um, light color instead of a high contrast color like a yellow or a red, because that could be strenuous on a lot of people's visions as well. Um, apart from that, this is a strong website. I think that once the font is tweaked up a bit, you'll have a very strong website that will make it for a very positive purchasing experience. And I do appreciate the um, mockups as well as they offer a bit of context there and neck besides a person as well. As you get into the bigger sizes, however, it would be great if you can offer a mockup of what that might look like in a space. So there could always be improvements, but overall good website. 
And that is about it for now. And there you have it. There are four websites that we covered today. And I hope that for you guys, that was helpful to see real world examples of what is great and what can be improved on with those websites in, hand, in mind. Just know that this is just my suggestions. This is my advice. If you don't agree, by all means, you don't need to implement them. I just think that with offering a second opinion of these websites, people can feel a little bit more confident in the choices they made, or they can see if there's room for improvements. Overall though, I like what our customers have presented so far, and I'm looking forward to maybe doing more in the future. Just keep in mind that, again, it is only advice, and whether you take it or not is up to your discretion. And if you're watching this and this isn't your website per se, I hope that the advice that I offered for our customers today can then be reflected on how you can improve your own website. Um, as a marketing professional, it is our job to see what can help sell and what can be improved upon. I think with the current landscape, there is a abundance of websites to choose from and having your own personal store is one of the ways that you can stand out. But at the same time, however, you have to make sure your website is effective in how it showcases its products and how it showcases your art most importantly. Things like mockups, how you get to your product page and your homepage, checkout page and other factors are just as important as the art itself. And I will say that with us exploring today's art, I learned a lot myself as well, because while I do review these um, websites all the time for my own just perusing purposes, I think that just being able to be concise with what we offer as advice can help not only you guys, but it also helps us at Luma Prince as we see what's working for our customers and what might be something that our customers can improve on thereafter. Overall, the business of selling art is very diverse and there's plenty of different clientele um, for every genre and every subcategory. So don't take this as um, scripture or don't take this um, with all that, but I am offering overall advice that could help improve any website and most commerce e-commerce stores. So with that being said, Again, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions, of course, for your own websites or if you want to offer some advice on your end, feel free to comment down below. We are going to be posting this on YouTube, so feel free to leave a comment. And again, if you like this content and you like us reviewing websites, please leave a thumbs up and that will let us know whether we should continue this series or not. So till then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.